Hey there, everybody. Uh, I am here in my lovely basement, and I am uh, talking to you today a little bit about the feedback that we got from the uh, professional development that we had today. Uh, I noticed that one of the things that was being asked for was some professional development on Google Classroom. Uh, then we had some other people that asked for just the basics. Uh, I understand there are some people who are brand new to Google and may not have known that we even had Google until they tried to open their email and were not able to. So as I'm learning more about your district, I am, well, our district, uh, as I'm learning more about our district, I'm learning what the needs are, and I would like to uh, have some action items in order to help you. So uh, one of the things that you will learn about me teaching in my basement is that, one, I have a crazy chihuahua, and so she is most likely going to interrupt us at some point. But hey, uh, as every teacher knows, uh, we have to get work done at home sometimes. And so uh, you may hear some clickety clacking and that is my chihuahua running around. Um, there is somebody else that I would like to introduce you to. So son, if you will come around this direction, this way, and step over that cord. This is my lovely son. Um, this is Matthew. So if you bring your head over there just a little bit better, then we're able to see everybody. So this little guy right here will want some attention at some point in our video. So we will we will make that happen. Uh, so say hi to everybody. Hi. Hi. Oh wait. I... Hi. Awesome. So uh, you will likely hear some pitter pattering feet and some uh, and some interesting sounds coming from the background. But hey. I'm winging this, so let's go ahead and get you guys some of the information that you need. So Matthew would like to tell you one more thing before I get started with the before I get started with the teachers. And you and you might get dripped off that sixty peeing on the newspaper. <laughs> he just peed. You, you never know what what children are going to say. That's what happens when you have a kid and a chihuahua. Hey, upstairs. live what are you gonna happen what are you gonna do okay so let's uh, begin by talking a little bit about uh, about the wonders that are Google so uh, starting off here in my uh, in my Google uh, Gmail inbox so uh, this may be a time if you are a, uh, a seasoned veteran uh, for you to tune out, or maybe you're doing something else while I'm talking, uh, but I'll try and provide some timestamps for you so that you know um, what exactly is, is going on. So uh, a couple of things. There is a difference between your uh, regular old Gmail and your uh, Maslin Gmail account. This is one of the biggest things that trips people up is that uh, if you have a personal Gmail, Sometimes you're going and you're trying to access your drive, access your apps, access your uh, your classroom, and you wonder, well, why isn't it there? Uh, that is because if you're like me and you have multiple Gmail accounts, you have to make sure that you are signed in in the right place uh, for multiple uh, different, different things. But in the end, you have to be signed into your Maslin account in order to get to your classroom and um, and your Google Drive. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, the uses of uh, Google Mail, the uses of, um, of Google Docs, Google Sheets. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how to use your Google Drive. We're gonna talk a little bit about how to put things into Google Classroom and uh, I'm just gonna show you some other things that I have uh, sitting around here in the back of my mind uh, during that time. So um, to get started with, thank you guys so much for all of your responses to the Tiger Tech tips. I'm super pumped about that. Uh, I love that you're getting some good out of it. And I had a wonderful teacher that I met with today who said, well, look at you, you're different, differentiating instruction for us uh, because you're providing uh, information for beginners and information for advanced. So yay, I'm uh, modeling best practices and I hope that you will be able to do that in your classroom as well. So uh, 
here we are looking at our Google account. And so um, one of, a couple of things, let me first talk to you a little bit about what those icons in the upper right hand corner mean. So uh, first of all, I can see that I am logged in as Amy, that should be uh, a given. Um, this here is a browser extension. This is called my Wise Stamp. This is something that is like an add-on for a, uh, an add-on as a signature to your Gmail. Some of you may have wondered how I got those, uh, how I got those awesome, let's see if I can find an example of one of them that I can, that I can show you. Uh, you can probably look at this one. Uh, you can see down here, it shows this Dr. Amy Hollingsworth, Technology Integration Specialist, and all of my um, information, and then my mask and tigers. If you wanted to get a stamp like that, then uh, you absolutely could do that through Y-Stamp. And so that is, uh, that is over here. So um, let's go to uh, Google Drive here. Um, here I have my nine little uh, boxes that lead to my Google Apps. Now I'm going to show you one thing that messes people up when we're going from Maslin Gmail to uh, an outside regular Gmail that you may have signed up uh, with for free. So uh, here I've got my uh, Google Apps and these are the ones that I have through Maslin because there I can see my beautiful picture. I am signed in there. So here I can access all of my uh, Google stuff through Maslin. If I continue down here, um, you can see that I get to Maps, Translate. Here I get to Google Classroom. Now Google Classroom is only available through Google Apps for Education or that G-A-F-E that you sometimes uh, hear me talking about. So uh, if you are signed in as anything other than Maslin Google, Maslin Gmail, uh, you won't be able to see those uh, classroom documents. Now, I am aware that there are some people that need to be reset as far as their Google Classroom goes, but it is 716 and nobody else is working but me. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna put that on my list of things to do tomorrow. So um, if I were logged in as my personal Gmail, I wouldn't be able to get to Classroom. So uh, for example, if I were to switch over to my personal, uh, my personal Google, my, my personal Google account, here I can see different Amy. I have a different picture there. And I did that on purpose. I am Amy B when I am bio teacher too. And if I were to open my Google apps here, Notice that there are many, many, many less uh, apps over here. So even if I go down to more, I'm still not ever going to get to Google Classroom uh, because I am now signed in as a different uh, version of me. And so uh, since I am not signed in as uh, ahollandsworth at massimschools.org Gmail, uh, I wouldn't be able to get classrooms here. So. One of the things that you may find, and uh, one of the wonderful teachers at the high school uh, pointed out to me that he just couldn't get to his Maslin Gmail, is that you have to make sure that you're signed in as the, uh, as the Maslin Gmail. You have to make sure that uh, sometimes that both your Chrome browser, the overall, and your, uh, your Google web page are both signed in as Maslin. Because otherwise you're switching back and forth between Gmails and that could be kind of um, kind of difficult to figure out which is the which is the different one. So I don't want to be logged in as Amy B. I'm gonna close this up. I'm gonna stay logged in as Amy here at Maslin. And so um, I know this is me. So if this might be a little helpful tip or trick for you if you would like to uh, give your accounts Two different pictures that way making sure that you uh you know who is who is you on the internet i suppose that works it's time to have more of my coffee and i'm watching my my kiddo and my dog dance around up there so um okay 
So continuing on with our uh, Google overview. So the only way I can get to Google Classroom is to get uh, to it from my Maslin Gmail. So I'm gonna click on my apps right here, uh, go down to more. I wish there was a way to move uh, this Google Classroom up, uh, but there doesn't seem to be any way. I keep trying to drag it up there. It just doesn't wanna do it. Hey, that's, I didn't make Google, so I just uh, try and figure out the best way to get there. So one of the things you might do, many of you may have noticed I've got all kinds of uh, shortcuts up here. Uh, maybe one of the things that I will do is make this one of my, oh, see, here's what happened. Look at the Bio Teacher 2 up here. Notice Bio Teacher 2 is signed in but BioTeacher2 does not have access to Google Classrooms. So I am going to switch over to my, uh, to my Maslin account. So here you can see me smiling over my shoulder. Here you can see me smiling over my other shoulder. This uh, Humus Lover I've actually had since, uh, since undergrad. And Humus Lover, for those of you who um, were thinking that I meant that I loved hummus, the, uh, the Greek delicacy, uh, what I actually mean is that uh, I love uh, humus. Humus is the uh, the area on the forest floor uh, where the dead and decaying leaves are falling down and becoming one with the dirt. So it's where the dead is falling to the ground and becoming something that, that brings up the life. And so I swear that's just coffee. So maybe it sounds a little hippie-ish. Um, so yeah, I was uh, kind of hippie-ish in undergrad. I was that kid at Mount Union who was wearing uh, socks and Birkenstocks and long skirts. So hey, it was a whole different life ago. Isn't that the amazing thing about school? We can kind of reinvent ourselves. So uh, here you can see that I am signed in in this upper uh, corner here as a Hollingsworth at MassonSchools.org. So if I were signed into something else, I wouldn't be able to get to my, um, I wouldn't be able to get to my uh, Google Classroom. And so we're gonna take just a really brief tour. Let me see how I'm doing for time because uh, I don't want this to end up running too long. 12 minutes, felt like 20. Okay, so uh, let's keep going here. Um, here you can see that I had a Maslin Teacher PD, and I had created this just so that um, the teachers that I was working with at that PD that one day would be able to um, see Google Classroom in case they weren't able to log in, but um, I ended up kicking everybody out except for, I think the only two students that are left in there are, are Jamie, uh, James, Tom, and Toby Gortifal. I'm not sure exactly how to say that. Okay, so uh, what you can see here is I am inside of my, uh, my Google Classroom right now. So you should have uh, your name and your lovely Maslin uh, picture that you've uploaded. Uh, you have the name of your course, and uh, I uploaded a photo here in this uh, lower right-hand corner here. And... Um, I invited both James and Toby to be my students so that I could mess around with it a little bit and see if I could get it to work. Um, one of the ways that I had them join my class is that I have here this class code. And so this class code, um, I don't want to reset it, I don't want to disable it, but the class code is the way that your students will be able to join the proper class. So you will have however many mods, however many sections, however many periods. I'm not sure exactly what you all call it here in Maslin, uh, but I do believe it is mods. So you would have one for each mod that you're in. Notice I could go over here to my uh, classroom main menu. I can go back to uh, my home and I can see my other class here. So I don't have any students in this other class. I made it like, um, oh, this is fourth mod. So notice I haven't really done anything with it yet. I haven't uploaded any photos, selected any themes. There's no students in there. Um, this was just me messing around and seeing if I could make another class. So uh, up here at the main menu, uh, notice that I have assignments here. If I were to uh, 
click on this, um, I would be able to see all of the classes, um, all of the assignments that students had either done or not done. Um, I threw one out there to uh, Toby and James, and I said, uh, you guys do this assignment about cells, and James did it and Toby didn't. And so I can see one that is done and one that is not done. This is basically like the teacher inbox. Uh, this is the basket where students put their assignment uh, so that they will be able to turn it in. So uh, let me show you a little bit about this assignment that I made for them. So um, here is where I, uh, I uh, sent it out to them. Uh, James did it, Toby did not. Um, if I wanted to, I could download this assignment or all assignments. Um, and this is where your students would go to uh, return the paper to you. So basically, you're passing it out to them and they are turning it back into you. Um, you can see this in your Google folder. So you should have a classroom folder inside of your Google Drive. And uh, here you can see two people. Uh, Rachel's not in my class anymore, uh, but James uh, filled out this document. So see, it says docs.google.com. This is cells, and this is uh, his name attached to it. So come up with a better naming system than just cells. Uh, cells, you're not going to be able to find it when it's done. One of the things that I would suggest that you do is that when you make uh, when you make these assignments, number them. Like the first assignment that you do the first day uh, is named assignment one, then the title, and then uh, and then some descriptive terms, or maybe uh, the instructions for the different mods, or uh, or whatever it is that you're doing. So I turned this to um, to James and I said, uh, tell me everything that you know about cells. And he said, um, I know that uh, cells are used in jails. So that wasn't extremely helpful for me. But then he went back and said, not much. So um, notice that I uh, put some feedback in here for him. This will be a great thing for you to be able to do for your students. Um, I put, tell me more. I need you to extend this a little bit more. Uh, once students turn in their assignments to you, they shouldn't be able to change them. So you get the assignments and then uh, you provide your feedback and then uh, you can send them all back to the students. You can release them all back to the students. So uh, two ways to give feedback. Uh, one is with these comments over here. In order to insert a comment, uh, you just click on whatever it is that you're going to uh, put your feedback in. You go to insert up here, and then you can insert a comment. And this is my new comment. And so uh, when I comment on this, then uh, this should send this back to James and tell him that I made a new comment on this. Another way that you can make comments is you can use a different font. Uh, I use purple all the time and bold just because that's what I always use. Not many people pick purple and bold, but I feel purple and I feel bold. So, um, so I can provide all my feedback and send this back to him. And so we go here. Uh, notice that we have my drive, uh, my classroom. This is the uh, this is the uh, class mod and then this is the assignment so if we go back up and look through this you can see i have um the cell assignment i have a science and math assignment i have some uh some templates so all of this is in my uh, classroom um you can also see that i had uh maslin chromebook slides and i also had my chromebook handout uh, which I will make sure that I share with all of you in the um, in the, the tech tip email that I'm going to send you along with this video. And so uh, Google Classrooms, um, just to be a little bit more clear about this, um, to make sure that you understand it. 
Google Classrooms, uh, and you're seeing this as a teacher view, you're not seeing this as a student view. Google Classrooms is a go between your uh, website and your uh, Google Docs that you're turning in. So, um, so I have to have uh, a website listed in order to um, in order to post that in my Google Classroom. Google Classroom is this constant stream of uh, of things that you are giving to students. You're either giving them announcements or that you're giving them assignments. So an announcement can be anything as uh, simple as a link. So um, here I have a uh, Google and Education, 30 ways to use Chromebooks in schools. Um, I found this great Google Slides on the internet just by Googling ways to use Chromebook in the classroom. Uh, and so I want to share this with all of you. And so um, in order to do this, I made a copy of it and I stuck it in my Google Drive because um, if you try to link to Google Documents, sometimes people who are outside of our school or maybe even people inside of our school are going to revoke access or revoke the public nature of it. And so, sorry, crazy phone. So as uh, people revoke access to things, uh, they can go away. And I don't ever want this to go away. Uh, I always want to have access to this. Now notice, if you look over here in the right-hand corner, I've somehow uh, become bio teacher two again. I don't know how that happened or why that happened, but just note that if you have multiple Gmail accounts, sometimes it, it magically goes back. And there's, there's no rhyme or reason to it, or at least there's no pattern that I have picked up and, uh, having a doctorate in education, I've gotten pretty good at recognizing patterns. So I will admit, I do not know. So this is saved under my uh, BioTeacher2 account. And if I want to share this with you, I just uh, go up here and I click in the, um, in the browser bar in Google, it's called the Omnibox, but I never hear anybody call it that. So I am going to control C to copy it. And then I'm going to go over here to my Google Classroom. I'm going to make an announcement. Um, here is a great slideshow. And so um, what I want to do is I want to attach a link. Ah, no, that's not what I want to do. I want to attach a hyperlink. So let's know what these buttons mean right here. Uh, the paperclip means you're attaching uh, something that you upload, like uh, a picture that you have on your hard drive or a document that you have on your hard drive or a slideshow or a PowerPoint presentation, whatever it is that you have on your hard drive. If you go here to the, um, to the little swooshy, uh, you can attach a Google Drive item. So um, anything that's under my Maxim Schools, uh, Google Drive, I can uh, stick it on here. Here we have uh, YouTube videos in case I want to put those out to you. And here, the little chain link, that means attach a hyperlink. And so what I have here, my uh, copy of my presentation, I'm going to control C that and I am going to uh, control V that. Uh, control C means copy, control C, copy. Control V means paste, uh, control V, paste. So control C and control V, and then I also use control X, which means cut it. Um, I use those a lot of times. Um, I, I'll talk about short keys at some point, but that might be a little mind blowing for this uh, moment in time. So I'm going to add my link here. Uh, so here I have my great slideshow. I have my link. And um, I am going to, what's this? I can post it or I can save it as a draft. So I save it as a draft if I want to send it to my students later. So if I'm creating this the night before and then I want to push it out to my students during class, um, I would save the draft until tomorrow. So here we've got post and you can see Amy Hollingsworth made an announcement at 7.33.
here's a great slideshow, here's this uh, Google Slides, and then any of your students could make comments on this. So if they have a question about the assignment, like, why are you posting this at 7.33? When is this due? Uh, do I have to do this? Uh, do I have to do all of this? Students will ask you crazy questions. Um, I'm sure that you can imagine them. You will get better at what information you want to provide to each of your students um, in your announcements. You may not just put, here's a great slideshow, but you might put, here is a great slideshow, read it by tomorrow at 8 p.m., fill out this uh, Google form, turn it in to me by uh, Saturday at noon. You probably don't make your assignment Saturday at noon, but hey, we're teachers, so we've all been in uh, college classes where stuff has been due at weird times. So, um, coffee. I'm also eating my dinner, um, which I don't know if you guys will be able to see here. I have cookie crunch. Sounds like a, a really appetizing dinner. But hey, I am a total nibbler, so I have to I have to eat little things and not like a giant steak dinner or I'll feel sick. Okay, so now I'm crunching and that's kind of embarrassing. Not really as embarrassing as what my said, son said earlier, but hey, we will get over that. Okay, so I, I made an announcement here. Uh, the other type of thing I could do is I could make an assignment. So, um, in my assignment, I put a due date and I can put a time. So if you're the kind of teacher that gives students time to do things in the evenings, or you have some kind of uh, asynchronous way of doing this, uh, you can put your title of your assignment, your description of your assignment, and uh, put any of your links in here the exact same way. And when I would hit assign, so title of assignment, Assignment one sells and stuff. And um, here I'm going to say sells and organelles and uh, sell you most. Oh my! I don't know. I like to. I like to keep it. Keep it fun. And uh, here, I'm going to make a new Google Doc so that um, so that you can see what my assignment might look like. So here I am in my Google Drive. I'm going to create a new Google Doc. So this is untitled at the moment, but I'm going to call it the same thing as my assignment. Control C, copy. Control V, paste, and then I hit enter, and boom, I got my uh, my Google Doc. And so I can say question one, what is a cell? Two, I already screwed it up. Two, uh, what is a, and for you English teacher, an organelle. What is cellulose? Man, I spelled that so wrong. Cellulose? Yes, I meant cellulose. How are these three uh, related? Compare and contrast. Then uh, I might put, did you have the same answers as your group? You might assign them into groups. Collaborate and report back. And so uh, here we've got our assignment one, cells and stuff. And um, it's all about cells, and if I wanted to, I could go um, find some kind of awesome picture of cells. So I Googled it, 
And then I go to, ooh, look at all these images. They're beautiful. Ooh, this gets me excited. So I am going to, I like all of these pictures. So I'm actually going to take a screenshot of this and I'm going to stick it here, inner, up, back. Boom. That's so pretty. So I copy that. And let's put this here. Sell so and stop. And then I bold it, control B, and I center it here, make it bigger. Awesome. And so then I'm going to space this down so that it doesn't start so close. And uh, I am really bopping here on my assignment number one. And so that looks good. So I am going to share my, I believe it is share my document. Share my document. Get a shareable link. Anyone at Mass and City Schools can view the link. So let's copy it. And now we are done. And now we are going to stick this puppy in here. Now, um, notice, I could do this a different way. I believe I could. Insert this file. Oh, it's Amy Hollingsworth. Where did it go? Uh, my drive. Oh, it's probably in my classroom somewhere. Oh, la, 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 la. Where did it go? There's always cell stuff. Oh, look. This is the really cool thing about Google, and uh, I don't know if you've realized this yet, but I can find things based on what they look like. So I will always have this memory of what this assignment number one looks like because I stuck that beautiful picture in there. You might be a really visual learner and uh, putting a picture, a great picture that goes in your assignment, uh, this would be a great way for you to be able to find that document later uh, because I have lots of stuff that's in here about cells, obviously, because I love science and I've got all kinds of, of, uh, of science stuff, but this is the only one that looks like that. And so it helps me to be able to find it again. Okay, so I double clicked on that. Yeah, look how much better that looks. Ooh, let's get rid of that puppy. Students can view file, students can edit file, make a copy for each student. There we go. So uh, now I am going to put that first assignment out there. You may also hear running water in the background. I have a giant tiger Oscar. Uh, he's been my favorite fishy for the last four years. He's about this big. And so maybe at some point I will uh, I'll put him in one of my videos because he's perfect because he's a tiger Oscar. And so uh, for those of you that don't know, a tiger Oscar is perfect for Maslin because look over here. He's orange and black. I was destined to work here, guys. This is like, this is like putting all the little dots together. How amazing. So... Here we go. I got our, our assignment number one. Uh, notice that nobody's done it yet. Uh, so there are two people that are not done. It is due on Thursday, August 20th. So I believe it just gave it a 24 hour, um, 24 hour rule. Uh, what happens if you hit these three little things here? Oh, I can edit or I can delete it. So if I edit it, maybe I want to give you guys more time. 
boom, 21st at 11.59 p.m. My college students would love that. My students would beg for five extra minutes to do an assignment. And one of the things that they will tell you is like, oh, I missed the, the turn in date because uh, I had problems with my computer. You will have to decide on some effective policies for your classroom, like uh, missing an assignment date and time is not acceptable, and you have to have it turned in even if you have computer pro uh, problems. Um, you will have to decide how much of this can be uh, done at home or how much can be done during the study periods or how much can be done on Chromebooks in the, uh, in the library. So you may see a whole bunch of um, a whole bunch of students flocking to your libraries to do to do your work because you give amazing assignments just like I did. All right, look how awesome that is. So, uh, so I can also say, boom, this assignment rocks. Doesn't get much better than this. So um, notice that uh, my assignment came from my Google Docs. Um, which I created through starting with my Google Drive. And uh, and if I wanted to use uh, some kind of educational resource, um, I would have to get that resource from a web page. And so some of you may have uh, Google Sites. I personally am not a fan of Google Sites. Um, I have some I have some old ones, which I can I can show to you. Uh, from back when I was a high school teacher. I kind of want to find that. Uh, let's see if I can get to sites. Just because I'm, I'm really interested now. Uh, Google sites, Google sites, Google sites. Let's see. I bet it's under my humus lover. Let's see. I kind of want to show you what I looked like when I used to teach anatomy and physiology back on the Mexican border. Um, it was it was kind of fantastic. I hope this is the one that it's under. So I'm going to Control F to find something. Notice that this little uh, box pops up here. So I'm going to look for sites. La la la. Uh, here it says websites. That's not the one. Hit enter to go to the next one. Oh, there's Google Sites. Create a website. Yeah. That's not it. Man. Oh, it's also uh, not the account that I want to be in. Humus lover. Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, I have all kinds of Google sites that I've created. So this is my favorite one, my free biology resources. Um, as you guys can probably imagine, as a, uh, as a fully Google person and believing that I could be helping teachers. Now, this is back from like 2005. And so... Even back then, I believed in sharing with teachers, sharing the best resources. What I didn't know back then is that um, if you do a Google search, you are very likely not going to come across a Google site. Uh, Google sites are not easily found in the Google search engine. So my free biology resources probably was never stumbled upon by any teachers. And that makes me really sad. Uh, but one of the things that's really cool about this uh, Google site is that all of the resources that my department uh, offered to all of the biology teachers in our district, and we probably had 10 biology teachers uh, in two different schools. So two 2200 to 1800 student schools and so we shared resources and this is something i can't wait to help you guys do uh, we shared resources back and forth between our uh, schools and i kept this website so that we would always have uh, 
says one of the hardest things about being a biology teacher is searching the internet for resources and modifying them to use in class. My goal is to upload all of the resources I have collected over my 10 years of teaching and have teachers share PowerPoint presentations, labs and activities, worksheets, articles and questions, and resources. And so I was a super sharer. And, and uh, so if I look at this, here I go to cells and microscopes. Um, you can see all kinds of, uh, of documents um, that I created in order to share with my students. So this was an activity I used to do with my students called Smelly Balloons. And so uh, basically what we were trying to do with Smelly Balloons is um, you would take a balloon, and for those of you that don't know, uh, balloons, their uh, rubber membrane around the outside is kind of porous. And so it allows the uh, air to eventually leak out of it. As any of you know, and you've had a balloon that uh, started off really big and beautiful and full, and uh, you went to bed and came back and it was splurged all over the, splurged? Mm, nice, use your words, Amy. Uh, and it was splurged all over the floor. And so um, I used to do this activity to demonstrate how that was similar to uh, cells with my students. And so what I would do is I would put a couple of drops of uh, essential oils into a balloon, and then I would blow it up and tie it off. And the students would pass the balloons around the room. I think I had five different smells. It was like lemon and strawberry and licorice and grape and uh, I don't know, coconut, something that they couldn't figure out what it was. And so the students would pass them around the room and they would smell them and they could actually smell the odor as it was leaking out through the membrane. And so I would have them uh, write the results in the data table and then compare the results with their, their classmates. Look how cool this would be as an activity in a, uh, in a Google uh, classroom uh, because now, thanks to Google Docs, our students could collaborate on this. And so um, they could actually be uh, collecting all of their data, collecting all of their, uh, all of their observations, and putting them into their data table, and doing that together in a collective Google Doc. I think that would be, that would be fabulous. And so uh, you can see the questions that I wrote about this, and um, this was a really fun activity to do. And this is just one example of things. Um, I had my objective, so students would be able to explain the process of diffusion across a semi-permeable membrane. So the why, why are we doing this? Um, the procedures, so uh, what are we doing? And then the data, how are we collecting data? And then uh, the responses from the students. So uh, this has like all of the, all of the, um, gosh, lost my words now, it has all of the aspects of a good lesson. The only thing that it's missing is a, um, is a standard. And so uh, we didn't work from standards back in Texas when this was created. So you can modify this uh, to include your standards, uh, to include exactly uh, the, the what and the how, the content, and the skills. That's what Peg talked about today uh, during our effective TBT session. She said the standards are now measuring a lot less of the what of the content and a lot more of the how, the skills. And so uh, we could definitely roll that here into uh, this great lesson. So look how far we have come in 44 minutes. So I guess this is going to end up being uh, almost an hour long webinar. So um, there's my spelly balloons uh, here. Notice how my mind works. I think this is kind of cool uh, to reflect back on, on previous Amy, uh, because this is before I would have done any of my uh, master's level uh, classes. This was back before I did definitely did any of my doctoral level classes but I still had the aspects of a good scientist. Um, I still went out and, uh, and came up with a hypothesis, went through procedures, did an experiment, collected data, and then uh, shared my results. That is fantastic. 
And my mind kind of uh, thought in folders back then. So I think that's kind of cool. I would definitely say that I am a folder thinker, and I would imagine that you as teachers probably are too. I definitely know that Renee at the high school is a folder thinker uh, because her and I have been strategizing over uh, how to organize lesson plans and curricular units and curriculum maps and these long-term plans and uh, do that by department, do that by uh, do that by the building level building level team and then at Washington High School. So we start off really small with one thing, less of things, and they go in a folder. Folder goes in a folder. Folder goes in another folder. So if you are like Renee or I, you probably have your life organized into folders. And so I have that same thing too. I have uh, activities that you can do about animals, plants, and organisms. And I put what the name was, what it was about, here it's how big it is, which version it is. Notice that I am constantly revising the things that I do. I don't know if you are like me, but you, uh, but you probably never just leave things as they are. You probably tinker, tinker, tinker. And so I tinker, tinker too. Um, and here is the last time that I changed it, 2008. So uh, not exactly 10 years ago, but over the 10 years that I taught. And then I had changed my name uh, it, under my humus lover to Amy Yadno uh, because if I put Amy Hollingsworth, I got mixed up with my bio teacher account. So, so much Google, so little time, but so much Google that I've had over so many years. I have just, I've just loved Google since 2005. So I've been living, living la vida Google for the last 10 years. And um, so here you can see all kinds of cool stuff um, organized into these folders. Notice that it's gotten better. Uh, we didn't used to have Add from Drive. That's, that's fantastic. Here I had articles and questions. So as a science teacher, um, we put out uh, great articles about science and then ask questions about them. So you can find all of these. And so um, if you like Google Sites, then use it. I mean, look how even 10 years ago, um, I was using Google Sites and I was organizing it like this. And I always think that it's cool for teachers to see how other teachers did it. So back when I was teaching biology, uh, this is how I did it. And this is how I organized everything. And this was so that I could share things. This wasn't so I could share things with students, which is so cool that we can do now. This was so that I could share things with other teachers because I'm a sharer and welcome to my home. I am over sharing. Uh, so all kinds of cool stuff that you can find. Um, if, uh, maybe I'll put the link up here so you guys can uh, look through and see um, how I put this together. Oh, look what I, I put here. I use the articles and questions as assignments on the days I'm a substitute teacher. So these are essentially uh, subfolders or blizzard bags. So uh, there I see as solving two problems that um, that I've heard over the last couple of days. So that may be something that you want to do. So close this up. Um, I did some other uh, really cool sites. None of them are as really cool as the site that I have now. And I will tell you, I have put a ton of work into this ton of money uh, but I use it as my um, as my platform for uh, publishing my textbooks so people want to know that the person that's writing their textbook is a real person and so um, there is the seven minute scientist and um, that is this fantastic picture of me um, notice that I have some links up here to digital resources I have my uh, biology with technology uh, I've had several of you tell me that you want to use Weebly's in class. Um, this was the Weebly that I used with my biology students. So notice that I did this from June of 2011 to April 2014. If you were to um, control F, so try to find something on this page, um, I could put in anything like cells. And... Oh, I doesn't have anything on here about cells. It has cell. Oh, look. No, here it is. 
cell, cell division, and cells. So if I notice all of these topics that I've made, uh, made or all these tags that I've made. So not only could I find it by date, I could find it by category too. And so here is my, uh, all of the different things that I have published about. What I wanted to do was make these categories searchable for my students so that if they knew that they had a question coming up about cells on their test and they wanted to study cells, then they could click on cells and they could go back to all of the things that I published about cells. So here I have uh, notice, good practice again, everything comes together, labeled by day, labeled by chapter, labeled by what it is. Uh, I got really good at uh, labeling and I use this same formula all the time, which day, what chapters, study guide. And then I uh, embedded this in my website. Now, uh, I am noticing that this is not, uh, this is not working so well. Now you can embed Google Docs in your Weebly. And so rather than doing this, this was the old school way of doing it. We used to use Scribd. So Scribd was a service where I could um, upload my Google Doc and then embed it in my website. But obviously it's not working very well now because they changed the format. But notice other things that they can find. Here's a video about DNA structure. Here is my, uh, here are my uh, instructions for how to get ready for their first exam. As you can imagine, as college freshmen that I was teaching in this course, um, they wanted to know really in detail how to take their first exams because that was something that they were, uh, they were pretty scared of their first college exam. And so um, I put in here how to get ready for your first exam. Uh, then I also put in a study guide. And here I have my uh, September 12th PowerPoint. Obviously, day six, September 12th, chapter three. Here it is in script. And so the students could click on this. And uh, this is all of my PowerPoint slides. And uh, you could go back and you could look at all of my lectures. This was back before I recorded them on videos like this. Um, but you could look back through these lectures and uh, find out information about uh, the stuff that I talked about in class. So they could see the slides. Uh, that way they didn't have to be like furiously scribbling. Um, they had the slides and I always put them up before beforehand so that some of my adult students wanted to print them out, so that's great for them. Uh, some of my students want to be able to find out what they're in for. Um, unfortunately, some of my college students wanted to decide if they're going to skip class or not. Yeah, nothing you can do about that. A uh, little different situation here now. But you can see the way that my uh, PowerPoints were set up. This was really helpful for my students to go back and be able to study it. Um, and uh, be able, this gets me back to my heart, my biology stuff. Um, and so uh, they could go back and they could find any of this information. Down here, they could look through the document. Um, they could open it up. Oh, this one I, I biffed on. So I will admit that um, sometimes I don't get things up before class. Uh, here's the day five presentation. I used to use clickers with my students because I wanted them to be actively engaged in my course. And so they would, like you're going to see with the Chromebooks, they came to class with all of these excuses and um, why their clicker didn't work. And I got to the point where I said, clicker's got to work. You're responsible for it. And so I would remind students very helpfully, though, uh, power up your clicker. And definitely um, in these later years, I said, turn off your, your cell phone ringer because the phones would be ringing in class. And we didn't get to take them away because uh, college students can have cell phones. But if they were being obnoxious about it, I could, uh, I could kick them out of class. I will tell you, I only ever left, asked in seven years two students, and I taught over 11,000 students. I only ever asked two students uh, to leave class because they were so disrespectful of their cell phones. So yeah, there you go.
Uh, so you can look through all of these. So that was all the information that I had up there about cells. Um, and, ooh, not just working on a PhD in curriculum instruction. I have a PhD in curriculum instruction. So uh, biotech technology, really awesome. Uh, not nearly as good as my as my seven minute scientist uh, website, but not built on the same platform. So you've seen my uh, Google site, you've seen my Weebly site, and now you're seeing my WordPress site. WordPress is a uh, much more advanced coded website uh, that has a uh, fluid layout so that it works on your phone and it's uh, much more advanced in order to do things like run advertisements. Like if I was gonna monetize my site, then WordPress is the, is the way to go. Uh, but for teachers, Weeblies are perfect. Uh, Google Sites also can work. I don't think Google Sites work as well as Weebly. I think Weebly is much more user-friendly. Uh, but you can see, I wrote an ebook, The Professor's Technology Toolkit. If any of you are, are interested, I will send it to you. Um, you don't have to be a professor. This is good stuff for teachers, too. Uh, so we've got our uh, Tiger Tech, tech Tips um, articles. I have my uh, my blog featured on e-learning feeds. I get a lot of blog traffic from there. Um, I also have um, embedded my uh, tweets in my site. So if you ever want to go see what I'm tweeting about, uh, there is my YouTube channel. Here is, I'm going to show you guys some funny pictures of me. I hope that you will appreciate my narcissism. I like to take selfies. So there's my nerdiness. Okay, same thing. You can look through all of the categories. I tag things. I have people. Uh, I have people commenting, and I have motivational pictures because I'm all about motivation. So uh, I guess I went off on a tangent there. I'm sure that you you feel the same. Uh, when you're teaching your subject, you may want to delve into so much information. Me, as a technology addict and self-taught, I've taught myself uh, to do all of these things. And, um, and I absolutely have faith that you guys can too. Where there is a will, there is a way. If you want to build a platform and write a book and have a website and, uh, and be a professional uh, have a professional presence out there, I would love to talk to you about that. I, I am kind of excited about teacher branding. So anyways, uh, there's the seven minute scientist. There goes all my Google sites. There's my other Google sites. Uh, getting back to my Google Classroom. So the thing that you need to know is that if you're going to um, post information for them, then you need to do it from a website. So you may find it from many different websites. You may have several different resources. Um, one of my favorite resources that I used to share with my biology students is called OpenStax. Uh, org. Didn't know what it was. So OpenStax. Um, how do you get to it? OpenStax College. Professional grade college textbooks for free. So they have uh, all kinds of subjects here. Um, if you are faculty, and I'm pretty sure that you guys could sign up uh, to use this for uh, advancing your students. Um, Here's all the free textbooks that they offer. So uh, you can read, you can read. Um, this one, biology was the one, 
is it biology? No, this is for biology majors. Concepts of biology was for uh, biology non-majors. And so um, I can go through, I can look at the table of contents. Um, I could find introduction to biology. Uh, so I could get this book for free. You guys can get any of those books for free. Um, you can share those books with your students. So if you want to point them to the free concepts of biology for non-majors uh, texts, then this may be one way to up your game as far as, uh, as teaching goes. Um, this may be more high school related. So um, if you want to up your game, if your biology textbooks aren't doing you any good, Use a college textbook. Um, you can copy and paste, and you could uh, put the stuff that you want to read into a Google document. And um, there's also resources like uh, PowerPoints and uh, testing questions. Ooh, you guys could steal some testing questions for your common assessments. That would be a fabulous idea. See, real world practical tips. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you could, um, Request a complimentary copy so that you can look through this. Uh, you guys have all kinds of things that could be available to you, especially at the high school. Hey, you probably use some of this stuff at the middle school too. Um, you might, if you don't want to share this with this, your students, maybe you want a refresher on your uh, on your biology. And so, um, feel free to do that with your uh, with yourself if you want to. Uh, browse down memory lane and remember your biology or your physics hey if you want to extend your learning and you always wanted to learn statistics yeah, learn statistics that would be so great for um for data driven uh res results in your school um that would be phenomenal i'm i'm super excited so uh you could post those things um uh, in your google classroom and so uh, that is probably enough for tonight. Um, yep, hour and two minutes. That's about perfect. So here is where I pray that the sound was good, that nothing weird happened upstairs, and that this all came together. Um, so I am going to share this on my YouTube channel and put it out to you guys. If you have any questions or you have anything more that you'd like to learn about Google Classroom, how Google works, uh, how Google Sites work, how Google Docs work, uh, I would love to get you more information. So uh, thank you very much for sharing your evening with me. And um, I'm going to show you something before we go. This is my baby. This is Tipsy. And so uh, Tipsy is kind of camera shy, uh, and she is looking at my son coming coming down the steps. I'm showing everybody Tipsy. Oh, I don't want her to lick my mouth. Uh, I want her to get her plate. No, I, I'm gonna put her down on the floor. Like, oh, oh, oh. I got it. Oh, and she ran for it. <laughs> so me and my lovely son are going to go spend the rest of our evening together. You can tell that we're both kind of kind of hams. And um, you guys have a great evening. Good night. Bye. Hey. Bye. 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 I think this is yours.